it's Dred here. Today is August 20th, 2019. And as you can tell, I'm getting the last bit of honey out of my bottle right here. I gotta get this too. A little drip of honey. So as a, the honey uh, bottler is running low, I'm gonna, getting ready to fill it up. We have really been selling the honey out of our gift shop like crazy. We brought our honey over there on July 11th. Here it is, August 20th, and we've sold over a thousand bottles over there already. So it's really, it, it, it really is flying out of there. And since we only bottle up 800 using our regular bottler, now I use this bottler now to go ahead and fill up our jars. And plus, since we did our bottling, originally and our honey's been sitting in the drums it started to crystallize already which is pretty fast i mean i haven't had honey crystallize on me this fast i can ever remember but it is starting to crystallize so it's another reason why i'm, I'm running it through the the bottle because it, it'll warm it up and then it'll break down the crystals so in this video i'm going to show you the way that i fill up my my bottler and uh it's kind of an innovative way. Some of the guys at the, the shop, I'm not smart enough to be able to figure out how to do this, but those guys over there, they are. But I am smart enough to ask them for advice. And they gave me an idea of how to pressurize these drums, uh, putting low pressure in them to pour out, the, push out the honey. And if you remember in the video when we're processing the honey, even when it was at the really warm liquid state, it took forever to go through the drum into our bottler. And so I, I was talking about how I could expedite that, pro expedite that process to, to speed it up for that honey to get in there. And they said, just go ahead and pressurize the drum and that way it's gonna push more honey through it. So the video that I'm gonna be doing today is showing you that method of, of what I came up with, what actually the guys came up with, to pressurize a, a, a drum using low pressure to push the honey out and then I'll show you some of the little tricks that I use when I go ahead and, and feed the bees and cleaning up some of this honey so let's do a little wrangling of bottling up some honey and getting it ready now the idea of pressurizing anything has an element of danger involved in it because you pressurize something it can always blow up so you really have to be very much aware of that possibility and using the plastic as opposed to a steel drum the pressure is very 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 minimal so we may only have three or four pounds that run through here and this is really important that you realize this that it's got to be a low pressure and being it's low pressure you have to you have to be able to, to deal with the loss of pressure and having a constant flow in it and part of the problem of figuring out how to do that was coming up with the right configuration for a, a regulator on this. The first problem that I ran into was with the lid itself. Now, on these lids, on the inside where the, where the lid meets the drum itself, there is a seal that goes all the way around it. And I was, I was working on the assumption that that seal would be enough to hold pressure in, in the drum, but it isn't. So the first thing, the first thing that I had to do was add a, a, a casket material, a casket, <laughs> a gasket material <laughs> to, to this to build this lip up so that we could actually keep pressure inside of the drum. And what I used for that was some, some casket, <laughs> casket. <laughs> some gasket material that we use at the CNC. And it's basically like, like window caulking. It's, it's an adhesive backing that will adhere to the inside of the seam and then at the same time build up that space necessary. And this is a quarter by quarter is what this material is that, that, we, that I use to do that. And I took this material and I wrapped it around the entire inside edge of, of the drum and when I, on the drum lid. And when I did that, that was enough to build up an area so that when I put the clamp around the drum, it did seal in the, the air. It, it, the air did not escape. So on the lid, 
you have these two openings and there's they're have they're tapped they're screw tapped and you can put things in there uh, uh, this one you can use this to, as a fill or you could use this one as fill but also we're gonna I use this one right here to, to do my tap for my air pressure and what I did was I went to the hardware store and found the fitting that would was the correct thread size for this and it wound up had a really really nice brass fitting that would, would fit that thread size and that fitting will go screw right into this hole right there, the thread size. Now it also has a, a, a thread size inside of that inside of it as well and this is where we take our nipple that's going to receive the connector for the hose and that, that gets screwed in to the bushing and when it's screwed in it's then ready to receive the connector from the, the regulator and that just snaps onto it right there. Some of our lids have the holes in them but some of them don't. So what I did at that point was uh, I had to get a connector, another type of connector and this is like the plastic gates for our, our honey um, for our honey buckets it's just it goes through your bucket right here and then um, it goes as a seal at that end there's another seal and then this, the, the screw the bolt that goes on the other end and you screw these together and it then becomes the opening for our fixture to go inside of there so this would just drill a hole into your lid and put this fixture in there and then you're, you're all set up to receive your air connector. Now here's the regulator configuration that we've come up with to, to do this process and we're using the smallest, the lowest pressure regulator that we, we could find. We tried three of them and this was the lowest one that we could find and so we have that one at this point right here. Uh, at this end we have the, the coupling that will attach to our drum right here running to our regulator right here and this is how the regulator is controlled and then on the intake of the air intake right here we also have a gate valve up here and we found that we needed to have this gate valve up here because the regulator even this regulator even this a low pressure it's not low enough and it still allows too much air to come through. So we needed some way to control the volume of air coming in and this gate right here, this little gate right here, does do that job for us. And I'll show you, I'm going to hook up the air to it, turn it off, and you hook it up. Like I said, there's only 20 pounds of air at that end. So as we turn the gate on, you'll notice the increase in air pressure. So this pressure that you hear right now, that this air that's coming out, is regulated by this regulator right here. Now we can shut it off or make it go, go more. We can turn it off or we can bring it up to the 20 pounds that's in there. So we're, we're going to be adjusting it only to about that much. And how do I figure out what is the right amount because you can hear it is just a little bit of air coming through but as the pressure in the drum as the honey in the drum decreases you're going to need more pressure in the drum more air volume in the drum to hold down and so that way we can increase our volume of pressure by increasing the, the amount of air going into it so that's really why you need to have two different valves on it to initially control it and then as the level of honey drops in your drum you need to be able to control it as well. To set it, we'll hook it up. There's no, there's no air going through it right now. We hook it up to our connector right there and when we open up this gate valve right here it's going to allow the air to start flowing through and as the air flows through you're going to see the top of this drum start to crown out so you'll see that. Alright, so you know there's pressure in there. 
At that point, I'm going to shut my, my gate off because I don't want any more pressure going in there. At this point, we're ready to open up our gate on the bottom and just start letting the honey come out. Now, I told you before, our honey was starting to crystallize. And so pressurizing the drum really does make the honey come out, even though it's crystallized, it makes it come out tremendously faster. And I'm going to show you the difference of when the drum is pressurized as opposed to when the drum isn't pressurized. So let me show you that right now. So here's an example of, of what the honey coming out of the drum without any pressure on it is going to look like. All right, you see the rate of flow. And if you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but this stuff is really crystallized. All right, so now I'm gonna turn on the gate valve and pressurize the tank. Quite a difference in feed. And you can tell our tank is still running, you can hear it, but look at the rate of speed it's coming out of. So I positioned our bottler underneath the, the gate right here. I'm gonna open up the gate, start the process, and then we're going to open up the valve gate up here, and I'll keep an eye on things at this end. All right, got a bottle full up. The drum's almost empty. We're gonna wait two more days now. I'll come start up again two more days. And after the honey is decrystallized, because I'm gonna plug it in, and then I'll show you how I clean off the, the top of, of this, and then we're gonna go ahead and feed the bees. So we'll pick this up in a couple more days. It's been two days now since our honey has been loaded inside of the bottler. And it's been kept right at about 110 degrees for two days, right around 110 degrees. The honey starts changing or losing its active ingredients about 114 degrees. So I really try to get below 110 degrees, but it's a little over right now. So it's been sitting there for two days and let's go ahead and check to see the consistency of our honey, whether it's decrystallized or not. Well, as you can see clearly, that is decrystallized nice, very nice. All right, now let me show you what I got on the top of the bottler. What you're looking at is the top of the bottler and the, the honey that's on the very top and on the very top of the honey is that very, very, very thin layer of, of wax, a really fine wax that wasn't strained out, or just, but it's finally risen to the surface. And I want to show you a little trick that I use to remove this wax right here so that I don't get very much of it into my bottles as I'm bottling it. The trick I use is I just take a piece of cellophane and I take it and I place it right on the top of the foam and I pat it down on top of the foam. And once, once you get the cellophane touching the wax and the honey, let it set us just a second. And you lift from that center of it and not drop it and throw it into a bucket right there. So you've gotten a bunch of it out of it already. So we'll just repeat the process again.
And we'll do it a third time. We'll go ahead one more time. Alright, that ought to be good. Now nah, let's go ahead and do it one more time. Now that's clean enough for me. I'm not really concerned with the amount of honey that came up with the wax when I pulled the, the cellophane out of the, the bottler because whatever honey came up, to me, I'm just gonna feed it to the bees and eventually I'm thinking I might get it back one day anyway. So it's not a loss. You might lose a little bit. You would think you'd lose a little bit, but you don't because the bees are gonna get it and it's all good for them too. But I do have one more trick that I use when I, when I feed bees honey especially if, there's, is, if the honey gathers in the bucket, or in this case, the tub and, and the, the big drum that, that I'll be setting out with them. So I got one more trick that I'm gonna show you. Now this is the bottom of the drum that the honey was in, and there's a lot of, well, a lot, there's not a lot, but there is a good deal of honey still in the bottom and some cappings in there, but there's enough honey in there for the bees to drown in. So I don't want the bees to drown in the honey so what I do is I just take pine straw and I, and I just put a little bit of pine straw around all of this honey and wax cappings and all this stuff. And that, that's it. That's all you really need, just to put a little bit so that any bees that can get in there, they can grab a hold or get on top of that, that pine straw instead of drowning in that mess of honey. And then I'll do the same thing to the tub that, that I've got the cellophane in. I'll do the same thing to that too. And then I'll put all this stuff outside. Now I won't need very much pine straw on this because the cellophane, they'll be able to get on that. But these little corners right here where there's a bunch of honey, that'll be a problem. So I just like loosely just put this stuff around it. All right, let's go ahead and set this stuff outside. As you can imagine, we're in the middle of the dirt and it hasn't taken the bees very long to find this stuff. We already have them starting to come around and sniffing it out. So that's all I have for you in this video. I know there's a lot of stuff. I uh, hope you enjoy some of the stuff I've been doing and maybe some of the, the, the tricks I use you can use and put to use in your, in your honey house and in your yard. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Red. I'm out of here until the next video. <laughs> you didn't think I wasn't going to show you the bees feeding on this stuff, huh? No way. It's just too, uh, too uh, cool of a thing not to be able to show bees feeding. I'm going to grab the camera and show you what, what the girls are doing a little bit close up. <laughs> Too cool. Now this is when that pine straw really helps out a lot. When you get that many bees in the bucket, they just stampeding, trampling, crushing all over each other. And those pine straw really, really does help. Listen to the sound of them bees. Oh. They really are thick in there. Let me show 
show you the let me show you the drum. There's not as many in here as in the little bucket. And there's a lot more honey in this one too. <laughs> Who knows why? Oh well. I got my fix. I hope you did too. How about this for a before and after shot? And this is that same bucket that had two inches of bees in the bottom of it. And look, you probably have about ten dead ones in the bottom of it instead of ten thousand. And everything is gone. And here, the other one. I mean, we got all kind of things. We got cockroaches, wasps, bumblebees, bees, ants. Everything in this one, but no honey. And this is our drum that we threw the suck of the plastic in. We took off of the bottler. Got some cappings down there. And here is our drum. And then again, just a handful of dead bees in this one, but no honey. That straw really, really does help. I just went and picked up another thousand labels. Uh, label, and I want to show you the little labeler mechanism that I use to, to, to get my labels positioned correctly on the bottle. So check this out. This is the fixture I came up with to getting my labels centered on my bottles, at least evenly spaced and centered on, on the bottles. And what I, what I have done is I put a stop at one end of the block right here. And this stop will then be, be the beginning of where I, I have my bottle laid up against. And what I do is I look on the bottom and I look for the seam of where the bottle is. This one is right here. And I put that seam at that point. And I don't know if the camera is showing it, but my tape shows the center of the bottle. And then once I roll, then, then when I put this label on it right here, I center this label to that and it, it will then lay down nicely right in here. And when I roll the bottle over, this distance to this stop right here is exactly half way through the bottle so that when I put this label on, it's going to be exactly on the opposite side of this label. Right. This is a little better angle where you can see my center of my, or the end of my tape is at the center of the bottle right here. And as I spin it right there, it's also the center of this. So as long as I label, put my labels to the center of this and on the center of the bottle, it'll all go really well. So let's do one of them. There you go. Nicely labeled. It's a really simple fixture and it works really well.